I am so excited about our next guest. She is a 2016 U.S. Olympic boxer. She is killing it. She just won a belt a couple of weeks ago. She's fighting for top rank. She's one of the best female boxers in the world. And she's joining us in studio. Michaela Mayer, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Welcome. Hello. Please have a seat right over there. Thank you so much for coming in studio. This is very exciting. Yeah, I know. I've been wanting to. Keep yes, for a and while. you changed your plans for us. Now you're very tall. How tall are you? Five nine. Five nine. So if you want to put that microphone close to your mouth, okay. um, and a little okay. higher up. Yeah, how's that? Okay. Uh, is it a little All loose? Right, you tell me. No, no, that's good. Okay. Yeah, okay. we're very DIY here. <laughs> Um, does that feel too low? Is it annoying? No, as long as you can hear me. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in. Yeah, thanks This is very me. exciting. What brings you to New York? Um, I came out here. Uh, Everlast partnered with Bloomingdale's. They're doing an event over there for breast cancer awareness. So I went and oh. taught a class at Bloomingdale's to a bunch of really awesome women. Wow. You taught a class? Yeah. At Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's? Yeah. Really? It's kind of hard. you got to push the mannequins around. But yeah. yeah. We did a whole workout. Had pink gloves and everything. So. Because you're sponsored by Everlast. Yeah, Everlast is my glove and gear sponsor. Okay, mm -hmm. and how was the turnout? It was great. It was a. Uh, they didn't do. It wasn't like open to the public. They sold a certain amount of tickets online, okay. but it was a sold out class. So it was great. Yeah, they're they donated a lot of money to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So hats great. off to Bloomingdale's and Everlast for yes. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for changing your plans to come in studio. Yeah. It's very exciting. Um, congratulations on the belt. The, let me see if I get it right because we're sort of noobs when it comes to this stuff. Okay. NABF. Yes. Lightweight. Junior lightweight. Junior lightweight. Which is 130. 130. Yeah. You won that a couple of weeks ago in Omaha. Mm -hmm. On ESPN. Nebraska. Yeah. Omaha, no, Nebraska. Okay. No. I am so confused. Yeah, Omaha. Yeah. I've been so many places. I don't even know where I, I can't remember. We're in New York right now. We're in New York now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's, I think, some of your, uh, your oh, action. Yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah. There we go. That and this was, was your first televised fight. No, the one before that okay. was my first televised fight. That's right, fight. in August. Yeah, and this yeah. was actually on the app. So um, I've only had one fight actually on ESPN. But hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm trying to impress everybody so that they want to keep me on ESPN. Obviously, that's why yes. I want to fight. You're killing it. 8-0 <laughs> okay. now. Um, you made your debut around a year ago, a little over a year ago now, right? Yeah, August 25th of... Last year, so I'm going on my ninth fight in a little over a year, which is awesome. Do you have your next fight lined yeah, up yet? Yeah, it's, it's already set. Man, December you guys, 14th. you guys move very fast in boxing. Well, I mean, it's I'm I think I'm a special case because it's this is unheard of for women's boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't. I mean, there's girls have been pro for five years and only have 18, 19 fights, and I'm half that in less than a year. Right. So um, that was one of my requirements if I was going to turn pro I needed to sign with a major promoter because I wasn't going to sit on the shelf and I think that's what a lot of women boxers have had to do over the years and that's the worst thing okay and why do you think you're the one who's getting fast-tracked and getting all this attention because I signed with a major promoter ah uh, okay so, so top um, rank. this is the first time in history where women can come to these promoters and say hey I'm a multiple time national champion world medalist Olympian Olympic medalist because they only let us into the Olympics in 2012 right right so um I'm uh, Top Rank's first female. Golden Boy just picked up their first couple of females, and so it's finally happening, but it just wasn't a thing before. So a lot of fans may not know, but you have a few connections to our world of mixed martial arts. And the first time that we spoke, and I hope I'm not revealing anything no. here, because I think you've talked about I it in I've interviews. I think i said everything, yeah. You were actually very close to moving over to MMA, from yeah. being an amateur slash Olympic boxer to now going to MMA, you were not gonna go pro into boxing. And I remember talking to you, uh, we were going back and forth, and then all of a sudden I see news that you signed with Top Rank. I was like, mm -hmm. what happened? It happened so fast. How close were you to actually going into MMA? I was literally a week or two away from signing a deal. Wow. With Bellator. I was gonna go in Bellator direction because they were gonna allow me to still box or whatever, and they were gonna give me time to make the transition and actually train for it. And I mean, when I got out of the Olympics, there was no major boxing promoter offering me signing bonuses and a contract like they were my, my teammates. My teammates that also didn't medal, but they right. were men, you oh, know? Okay. okay, so I'm not getting that offer because it's just not happening. And I thought, like, do I want to go for another Olympics? Because it's hard. You're traveling the world, you're fighting your ass off constantly, but no one sees you. You're fighting in, in random cities, right. Bulgaria, okay? Yeah. So I can't reel in a following because no one can see me fight, which means I can't reel in the sponsors, I'm not on TV. And I'm like, where can I go to capitalize on my, the next five years? Because you can't be an athlete forever. And I, women were getting the respect in MMA. So right. I was seriously serious. And I was excited about doing it. But um, the stars kind of all aligned at once. And my manager sat down with Top Rank. And he's like, let me just, let's just make sure we have all the, our options on the table. And Top Rank's obviously the best promoter in the United States. I mean, they're, they're the best. Mm -hmm. And so 
I'm like, all right, whatever. But in my head, I already ha- I was already set. I was like, okay, I, I want to do this MMA thing. Like, I want, I'm ready for this. And um, I sat down with Top Rank a week later, and a week after that, I was signing a contract with them because they, wow. they 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 gave me everything that I wanted. They gave wow. me, they were going to give me just what Bellator was going to give me. And so I was like, all right, let me continue my dream of developing a market for women's boxing. Did they know that you were that close to signing with Bellator? I told them, yeah. I said, listen, okay. I already have a, a nice deal on the table, and uh, if this is gonna work, this has got to be matched if, wow. at least because, you know. I feel like it's one of those things where, like, okay, it's almost like you you want what you can have. So then when they 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 found out that you were close to signing with someone else, they're like, wait a second, we need to keep her. We need to keep her in boxing. We need to sign her. I, I feel like that worked to your advantage. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a couple of things. One, uh, I feel like. I had the I had the resume, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, so that backed it up. And then I, I feel like they think that if they're going to move a, a female in boxing, it's got to be the full package, okay? She can't just be a great fighter. She has to be able to speak. She has to walk the walk, talk right, the right. talk, everything, because they were, like, taking a risk, saying, can we – There was there's never been a market for women's boxing. Can we do it with Michaela? And I sat down in their office, and I'm like, if, you can, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be me. Was Belts were mad? No. They were mad. No, no, I no hard know. feelings. I had my manager deal with that, okay. but you know, I had to do what's best for me. I mean, sure. Yeah. And is there any chance that you go back and and revisit this idea, or you think you're done with it? I think I'm done with it because I feel like the boxing thing is working for me. Uh-huh. You know, Top Rank is moving me really, really well, um, and I think there's some really big fights for me on the horizon. Okay. Um, were you so you, since you were like a week away from from signing with Bellator, mm-hmm. had you decided where you're going to train for MMA? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I was gonna go out to Uriah Faber's gym. Yeah. Which, which Team I, Alpha Male. Which I did for a minute, and then I ended up moving back. Um, w- where's home now? Is Colorado it? Springs. Okay. Yeah. So you did for a minute, then I you did moved for back. a minute. I moved back to Colorado, and I was gonna try and do my boxing out there, and I did for a while, but. Uh, what happened? Lots of things happened. I okay. uh, moved out there with my boyfriend at the time, who oh. he was transitioning to. So he stayed there, and then um, I had a coach out there as well, but. You know, nothing compares to the training in Colorado. Okay. I have sparring partners constantly because you're right there at the Olympic Training Center, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's such an intense training lifestyle that I'm used to, and I didn't have that there. It was uh. a little bit it, – it just wasn't as tough and wasn't as hard. So I'm used to that structure. So okay. I had the altitude yeah. in Colorado, which is huge, such a huge advantage. Plenty of sparring partners, good coaches. Right. So – I just knew I had to go back there. It was a little there. too loosey-goosey there? A little too loose. Not as much structure as I'm used to. Okay. Too much of a commute. I, I didn't I didn't have the best strength training, and um, I think my boxing coaches out here are more experienced, so. Why did you choose that gym? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had met Uriah Faber at the Ronda Rousey fight. Oh, okay. Because I went there. I was, I was sparring, yep, giving Ronda yep. Rousey some sparring for her last fight, and uh, she'd got me tickets. So I went, and I talked to Uriah, Uriah Faber, and I said, you know, I'm looking to transition. And he said, we'd love to have you come out and try it. So Okay. Yeah. And and your boyfriend was a wrestler, right? Yeah. Is he doing MMA now? Yeah, he is. Oh, he has. Has he actually gone pro? He, yeah, uh, I believe he had his first fight this last week. Okay. But you guys aren't together? No, no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. Is no. everything okay? I'm good. Oh, yeah. Yeah? I'm perfect. Okay. <laughs> Don't date fighters. It's a mistake. I know. I don't know yeah. about dating fighters. Or, or any kind. Of, I don't know. I just feel like it's it's just it's too combustible. Both it of is. you in the same world. It is There's really jealousy hard. probably, right? You're competing against each other. feels like a mess. I don't even know. I don't even know like the type of person I want to date anymore because you think that it's, it would be hard to date someone with like a regular nine to five because right. I don't have that kind of lifestyle. Sure. So I'd be like wanting to do things in the middle of the day just wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know about dating a fighter. It's it's rough. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say. I I have heard from from the males in the relationship where there's a male and female mm-hmm. both fighting that it's hard sometimes when the female gets more attention because it's such an alpha male thing. Or even uh, I know there's one case which I won't uh, explicitly say who it is, but like where the 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 the, the husband is a nine to fiver and the female is a fighter. Yeah, can't deal with that as well because she's now the alpha in the in the relationship and getting all the attention. Yeah. it's a big problem that you guys have to deal with. I think so. I think it it'll just have to be the right person. Sure, you know if they were. Right. I'm not going to write them off because they're a fighter. But no, I understand, but I could see why it would be sort of like yeah. oil and water. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then we left alpha male. Yes. That's when we decided to go into boxing. We've turned our back on MMA. We're never going to do it. Do you even watch MMA now? Um, 
Yeah, so I'm still an MMA fan, but okay. I, I've been watching less and watching more pro boxing. Because yes. even when I was competing for Team USA, I didn't watch a ton of pro boxing. It's oh, just such a different world. Yeah. So, you know, trying to learn my world now. <laughs> it, it feels to me, and correct me if you feel otherwise, that there's been some sort of moments where female boxing has had, you know, the shine, mm -hmm. uh, Mia St. John and Leila Ali and whatnot. But this yeah. feels like, like the most legitimate era in female sure. boxing history, right? Uh, this past weekend, Katie Taylor getting a ton of pub on DAZN. Mm -hmm. You're getting a ton of attention. Clarissa Shields, who I know you are, are friends with, right? Yeah. Um, Cecilia Brakis. It, it just feels like in, in the past you could name one or two and they were sort of like a novelty act. Yeah. Why do you think this is happening all of a sudden? Um, the Olympics. Okay. Th look at the girls in the past or even the girls who, you know, not the Leila Lee, they're not the Mia St. John's like, who actually had careers, but the girls were hustling behind the scenes who just weren't getting the, the yeah. recognition. They didn't have the the ladder to climb. They didn't have, I mean, they just let women to uh, allow them to compete at the world championships. I mean, they give, think it was something like 2008 or something or four. And then Olympics 2012. So like I said, it's the first time women can can come into these pros with these with these resumes better than most guys. Right. And that created a lot of that gave them a lot of experience and just kind of built up the the level of competition for women's boxing. Can I give you my theory? I think yeah. your theory is good. I also think MMA helped a little bit. Okay, it did. You I know, feel I like agree. UFC having shows headlined by females and saying, hey, look, people can come totally. and check this out, made the boxing guys, the old boxing guys be like, oh, there's My promoter said that when oh, we he did. sat down. He's Who, like, Todd DeBeuf? Yeah, and okay. we, we talked about that. You know, like, look what, look what girls like Ronda Rousey have done. Like, we have been, it's been proven that women can sell fights, women can headline. People want to tune into women combat sports. Another theory that I have that I'd love to get your uh, take on, because I feel like you have noticed this as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I hate to say it, but I just think it's the truth. I think that the attire has actually been unflattering to females and, and men are chauvinistic. And the fact that the female boxers are wearing these baggy, baggy shorts and these big gloves, as opposed I mean. to an MMA. <laughs> well, but I've noticed that you don't do that. Yeah. Is this a conscious decision on your part? Um, it was conscious only because I don't like big baggy shorts. Okay. I mean, we had to wear them in the amateurs, like our shorts, the USA shorts are like down to here. Um, I mean, I don't even like training in baggy clothes. I train in a sports bra and tight leggings just because that's how it's I feel easier, comfortable. Right. Yeah, so that was just, that's just my style. Okay, so yeah. no, no one sat you down or you didn't sit with someone and be like, hey, maybe if I make this a little this more will sell feminine? More? No. no, no, that's just my style. Okay, that's just how but I, I like feel like it's actually working. Because Great. women don't work out in big baggy shorts like that. Yeah, like, women I mean, some don't do. I just don't. Okay. I don't like wearing a ton of clothes when I work out. Okay. It's rare that I'll wear a shirt even. Just I, I, I was trying to give you credit for actually having the Thank foresight you. of changing <laughs> things because I feel like that's been a problem. Because if you compare it to MMA, what are they wearing? Yeah, I know. No one's wearing baggy stuff, Super right? Skimpy, yeah. Right. I mean, they have to, but. I don't know if it's, is it skimpy? Do you feel like it's skimpy? Well, or is I mean, it just what's just easier when you're grappling to, and stuff like that? That's what I'm saying. It's easier yeah. when you're grappling, but compared to what we have, I mean, you know. Sure. It is short shorts and right. Why do you think MMA fans have been so much quicker to, you know, uh, UFC will headline a card. We were just talking to someone who's going to be, you know, on a big fight, John Jones. They'll headline, uh, you know, cards with females and MMA fans who are supposed to be like these, you know, sort of jocks, dumb alpha male type mm -hmm. of people. They don't bat an eye. They have no problem with females headlining cards. But in boxing, it's been this thing where HBO never headline and this or that. Why do you think it took so long for for the boxing community to accept? female fighters honestly there was a lot of female fighters but not all of them were espn worthy not oh, all no. of them were worthy of getting signed by these major promoters they didn't there wasn't this the talent level wasn't always there hmm. um and people want to argue that like oh we haven't gotten the attention but not everyone deserves that 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 spotlight the the talent level okay. the talent pool is is a lot deeper now i mean these girls that are coming into the pros have actual skill and that's why i say that the olympics are such a a huge contribution to that is because <sighs> these girls are coming in the pros who have, have over 150 amateur fights. I have almost 150 amateur fights. Wow. You, the girls that were pro back, back in the day didn't have that. So that's where the experience is coming in. You know, that's why I can go up against girls who are 20 and 0 now and still look way more crisper and skilled than them is because I have so much talent, uh, background and experience in the amateurs. Do you cringe when you watch um, MMA fighters box like how, you know, you know, female fighters, because it's not very technical at times, right? It can get a little ugly. Yeah, so, but I've also, I've, I've, my mindset has changed a little bit because at first I'd be like, just step in with the one, two, but the spacing in MMA is so much different than yeah. it is in boxing. You can step into your punches in boxing. 
I mean, when, in MMA, you get kicked in the head or taken down. Like, you just right. don't know what's coming at you. So it is very different. Okay. Because I feel yeah. like for the longest time, uh, boxers were criticizing MMA fighters for the way they box. But I'm actually hearing more of this where there's an appreciation for the weapons that they have to worry about. Yeah. Now. You can't just you can't just worry about this, right? You have yeah, to Yeah. So much. And training a little bit for MMA, I realized that. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever done any ground stuff? A little or bit. Or just when you were dabbling. Just when I was dabbling, okay. I did a little bit, but and honestly, like I wasn't like super fond of it. Okay. I was just like This, this is, is hard. Yes. <laughs> because they'd go over like like literally eight moves and then okay, that's one move. Yeah. Like eight moves is one move. Put your ankle here. I'm like, what the? F how much is this? Sh Can I cuss on here? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go nuts. <laughs> but 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 I, I'm assuming someone with 100 fights, 150 fights, it's hard to reprogram your brain as well, right? Yeah, to for sure. To worry about that stuff in a fight. You have enough to worry about just in boxing alone. Yeah, and that's that's another reason why I'm really glad that I didn't I didn't try and do MMA and boxing at the same time because oh, yeah. it definitely would have changed my boxing and I don't think I would have been as successful. So, um, your first foray into this world of combat sports was actually Muay Thai. Yeah. 16, 17 years old. Yeah. You were sort of a problem child. Is it fair to say? I mean, I definitely needed to be in the gym. Okay. I think that really kind of gave me direction. Why you were just like partying and not paying I just, attention to school? I didn't have, I didn't, I did, I did whatever I wanted. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have to go to school. My dad got, uh, I was just telling this to him earlier, but my dad got custody of us at a really young age okay. and he had a full-time job. He had three daughters and a full-time job. So I had to get myself up and go to school. He was gone before I left, gone before, and then home when it was already dark. So wow. what I did during the day um, was up to me. So I just sometimes just wouldn't get up and go to school and just got caught up in partying with my friends and wanting to be a teenager. And you had two sisters? Two sisters. Older or younger? One older, one younger. Okay, and did they follow you as well? Like when you went to go check out the Muay Thai school down the block, did they do the same? No, because my little sister was like nine years old. Ah, okay. My older sister was a year older. She had a little more structure. You know, she was like going to college and doing well and whatever just i think we all just kind of responded to our lifestyle a little bit differently okay um and i'm the one who gave my dad help <laughs> what happened with your parents um my mom well they divorced at a young age and then my mom's always struggled with alcohol and substance abuse so okay. when i was 12 13 my dad got custody of all of us and i mean wow. he did a great job he did the best he could you know I wouldn't, he was so supportive of my boxing too. I remember coming home one day, I'm like, dad, I signed myself up at a Muay Thai gym. I'm gonna start fighting. He's like, okay, cool. He was yeah. probably like, hell yeah, let's do something productive because there would, there were weeks where I just wouldn't come home for a week or two at a time. Really? Yeah, and so he started to get, you know, he's worried about me. He wanted, so when I said I was gonna start boxing, he saw everything kind of change. Where did you go for like a week or two? My boyfriend's house at the time. Wow, and you wouldn't check in? I wouldn't check Man, in. You're the worst I wouldn't call. child ever. I was just, yeah, I was so, I'm, I really like messed up my dad Man, <laughs> for a poor while. poor guy. I know. Probably Sorry, has enough dad. three daughters, <laughs> single dad, and you're yeah. just bouncing for a week or two? Yeah. So How's your relationship with him now? Awesome. I mean, great. Okay. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's like my number one supporter. I mean, how many dads and their daughter came home at 17 and said, dad, um, or 18 when they announced the Olympics. I'm like, dad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start training for the Olympics. It's in two years. I need to start going to these national tournaments. And he was on board. He's like, all right, let's do it. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So wh why did you switch from Muay Thai to boxing? Um, a couple of reasons. One, I was just going to take some fights to develop my hands more. That was my coach's idea because I had like a kink in my back and I didn't want to kick Okay. And for a while. And so he wanted me to take some boxing fights. And I literally never went back to, M to Muay Thai. Really? After my first boxing fight. You just liked that. You, you, you sensed a difference. Yeah. I think there, I wanted to be, I knew right away I wanted to be the best female fighter in the world. Okay. I mean, even I sucked ass, right? I just walked into the gym and I was like, no, this is what I want to do. I knew right away. And so when I started boxing I just realized there's more of a ladder to climb in boxing in the United States versus Muay Thai and you know so shortly after they announced the Olympics and yeah were you a fight fan as a kid like did you watch no no one in nothing. my family boxed no one in, I didn't I didn't know anything about the sport wow it was just because there was a gym by my house that I walked by every day and, and did you start to sense that you became a better person like a, you, you started to pay attention more you were better to your dad once you got this routine in your totally. life totally I mean I everything I was I buckled down in school, um, and I was just—I'd go. I'd wake up. I went. To, I ended up in that 
that small school attached to the big school because uh, okay. I was so like behind in credits wow. and everything. But what was cool about that, it actually worked out because I got out of school at 12. As long as I did like all my work, I got out of school at 12. So I'd go to school till 12 and then I'd go to work till 4.30. I worked at a salon across from my house. And then from there, I'd run back to my house, grab my running shoes and run to the gym. Wow. And I did that for like three years. Every day? Every day. And when did it go from just doing that type of structure to actually trying to make this into your life, into your living? Um, well, like I said, I knew right away, but and I knew also knew right away that if I was gonna have a career in the sport, I had to brand, start branding myself. I had to get sponsors. I had to get endorsement deals. This is before I even had an Instagram, right? So yeah, yeah. it was like this mindset that I had. And um, I ended up taking a, I came to my dad one day when I was like 19 and I was like, dad, I just come off a loss. I'm like, I don't know, I'm boxing now, but I was still with the Muay Thai coach. I'm like, I just don't think that my training is where it needs to be. And I was bummed out. And so he said, well, there's this program I found on the USA Boxing web website where you, it's in Michigan and you can go to school on scholarship and train with a two-time Olympic coach. It was like an Olympic training site attached to the school. The only boxing scholarship offered in the United States. Wow. I'm like, hey, yeah, I would ever look into it. I'm like bummed out, right? He calls me um, a couple hours later, or no, a couple hours, a couple, like a week later or something. He was trying to get a hold of this guy, Coach Al, my coach now, mm -hmm. and say, you know, they're, they're letting women to the Olympics now. You have to take my daughter, take my daughter. She wants to come to your program. And two weeks later, I was on a plane from LA to Northern Michigan with suitcase and like the day before school started. So I enrolled myself in college and I started wow. training with uh, Olympic coach Al Mitchell. And, and you went alone? I went alone, yeah. And, and that was and, nine years ago. And, and he didn't want to coach you, right? Like, he, yeah, no, he, he's coached the likes of Tyson in the past yeah, and, and legends, mean, and he wanted nothing to do with females. Yeah, I mean, he was a 96 Olympic coach. So he worked with Floyd Mayweather and wow. I mean, Andre Ward, everyone. So he had never trained a girl and he was like, well, ugh, I guess if they're in the Olympics now, sure. <laughs> but uh, he, I don't, I definitely surpassed his expectation. I was like a diamond in the rough. I knew <laughs> I was going to be great. I knew I was going to make that Olympic team, but I don't think he really expected me to go as far as I did. Did you get the sense early on that he was kind of doing it like he was trying to break you and that you would leave and be out of his hair? And then you sort of want him over over time? Yeah. I mean, I don't think he wanted me out of his hair, but I just don't think there was like a bunch of other guys in the team too. I was the only girl that um, were really good and probably more likely to make the Olympic team than I were. So okay. uh, I, he trained me and everything, but I just, I don't think he's, he even says, he's like, it wasn't until you made it to the finals of Olympic trials in 2012 that I knew you were gonna, you, you were gonna be great. Okay. And that was only two and a half years after I met him. Wow. So we'd only been training together for two years, yeah. You didn't make the 2012 team. I didn't, no. How difficult was that? It wasn't difficult at all because I came really close, so yeah, I was bummed out. But if you think about it, I was 22. I had just started boxing at 18. I took my first boxing fight at 18. So I hadn't been doing it that long. And I made it to the finals, lost by two points. So I, I, you know, I proved to myself that I have what it takes. And I immediately knew that, okay, I'm going to train for four more years. and I'm going to make 2016 Olympic team. But it, like mentally, there's not a moment there where you're like, oh, I got to climb that ladder all over again. It's exhausting. No, nope. That's how I would feel. I just had so much, I felt like I had so much more to learn. Okay. I said, if I can do this after three and a half, four years yeah. of training, imagine what I can do in four more years. Right. And I loved it. So it wasn't a problem to me. What are your feelings towards the U.S. Olympic team? I know Rhonda has been very vocal. She's not a fan. Looking back, how do you feel about it? The experience, how they treat you, what they do with you afterwards? Looking back, I would never go for another Olympics. Okay. Um, it's like a monopoly. Okay, it's like it's, it's almost like a scam. Um, there's a rule. There's something called Rule 40 in the Olympics. Do you know what that is? Uh, no. So basically, first of all, Olymp people training for the Olympics don't get paid a lot of money, especially when you're not in sports like gymnastics, swimming, track and field. Right? When you're like in sports like sure. boxing or what do you get like twelve thousand or something? Huh? For a year? Oh yeah, it's yeah. like standard is like if you're on the national team number one, it's it's like a thousand dollars a month. Jeez. Um, I was getting a little more because I had made the Olympic team and I was whatever, but Still, at the end of the day, it's not enough. Like you're not making that much money. Right. So what you got to do is you got to go out and you reel in as many sponsors as you can. Like, okay, maybe you reeled in a sponsor. They're going to pay you three hundred dollars a month. Okay, they're going to pay you five hundred dollars a month. They're going to pay you thousands. So now you're accumulating these sponsors, and then you get to the Olympics. And unless you're Nike, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, I had Under Armour. That was my one big sponsor. Okay. So they had to pay a big fee to get to be able to post or whatever about it. But anyone else, I couldn't talk about my sponsors. They couldn't talk about me. There's a huge blackout period called Rule 40. Oh. And so I had a couple of sponsors and I get there 
and they're like, you can't talk about you can't talk about your sponsors. Sponsors can't talk about you. And I have to tell my sponsors who have been paying me every month for the last year yeah. that don't talk about me during the Olympics. And wow. so where's the incentive? Yeah, there's no incentive to invest in an Olympic athlete. So and why is that? Why did they even have that rule? What's the point? <sighs> so the Olympic Committee can get money off major sponsors like okay. you know like they did a lot of lot of money off mcdonald's and nike and coca-cola and right. all that so it's just a struggle and then like i said you're competing in these other countries no one can see you fight i don't want to say i had a great time usc boxing was the time of my life i mean I, I trained with my best friends i traveled the world it was awesome but i can't do it for another four years because i have to capitalize on my youth right okay. and people can't see you fight and so you can't ruin the following can't ruin the sponsors can't etc right did you even consider at all trying to go for the 2020 games? I I think I knew right away. I, I felt, I kind of like fell into a slump after the Olympics for like a good six months. And I was like, I didn't really get any, I'm like right back training for nationals, right? I'm like, okay, I didn't get the major sponsors I want, thought I was going to get. I didn't get my medal. Um, I didn't really get a ton of recognition because they didn't pay a lot of attention to boxing. You know, it wasn't a very Americanized sport, so people aren't paying attention to it. And uh, I just didn't get everything I wanted. I was kind of like right back at square one. I'm like, after 10 years, I was right. like, what do I do now? And that's why I started thinking, like, how can I? And I've always been a go-getter. I'm just like, okay, where can I go make the most money? Where can I go make the most of my career? Because that wasn't enough for me. And so. I would imagine having to get to the idea of, of like, oh, I'll go do Bellator, I'll go do MMA is almost, does it feel like a defeat after all that time that you put into a sport that you have to go into a different sport in order to make money that you think you deserve? So that's what I started thinking about. And I was like, Ugh. it's like, you're starting right back from the bottom. Like yeah. at the top of my game box, and I'm going to start right back at the bottom again. And that's why I'm so glad I didn't go. And I, cause yeah. I almost lost sight of that, like that dream I've always had. Cause I, when I decided to box and do all this stuff and I'm going to get sponsored, I'm going to get this. It wasn't a, there was no like path to follow. There was, it wasn't a non-existent career, right? Mm -hmm. But I was having to pave this way and create this career on my own. And I got so frustrated after the Olympics. I was just like, I don't know, maybe I almost lost sight of that. So I'm mm -hmm. really, really happy that I stuck with boxing and that I'm doing what I'm doing now. Way back in the day, you had a Dr. Pepper commercial. That, that, was that 2013? <laughs> that funded my Olympic dream. Did it? Yes. How big of a deal? Wow. It's huge. It was huge. They deal. paid that much? Yeah. They paid me a lot of money. And it funded my Olympic dream that I got that deal in 2013. I mean, the money lasted till 2016. Wow. <laughs> so that's incredible. Without me having to work, Just I from stopped one commercial. working. Yeah. Because you get residuals and it was a uh, huge commercial. It played during the, um, call the Rose bowl wow. and all that. So how did you even get that? They just called. I mean, wow. <laughs> honestly, I, th I just I always put it in my mind. Like, this is what I wanted to do. I need these sponsors. I need these endorsements. Um, I think they got a hold of Coach Al first. They're just looking for unique people. Um, right. It was one of a kind. That was the slogan. Yes. And yes. Um, so that was awesome because I was like, OK, I'm doing it. But then ugh, I didn't get another deal until three years later. You right. know, I, so it was definitely a struggle. But that fund my Olympic dream, I was able to focus hundred percent and not have to work um every time like like if you if, if, you, if you look up your story um and, and and the way people are sort of introduced you it's like model turn fighter model turn box former model did you actually seriously model at any point no, i i dabbled in modeling it was something that everyone told me i should do and so i thought that's what i should do and you know, I did a little bit, you know, I did some photo shoots. I was trying to put together this portfolio and whatever. And I did some shoots, but I was, I wouldn't really call myself. I was more of a boxer than okay. ever was a model. Um, but it was something that I, I really was, was passionate about. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go to this. But it was because everyone told me that's what I should do. Right. Oh, you're pretty, this, that. But I didn't love it. And I knew when I stepped into the boxing gym, like this is what I wanted to do. Does it bother you that you get recognition for your looks as well? Like the, the, the sort of juxtaposition of the fact that you're good looking, but also a fighter who gets punched in the face. Does that bother you or are you okay with that? It doesn't bother me. I think it's like an intriguing dynamic to people um, just because there's been this stereotype for fighters that you have to be rough and rugged. So, right. and you know what? I think that I represent a handful of people out there that maybe weren't represented before because I remember when I first started boxing, I would, I didn't want to wear pink to weigh-ins, right? Mm. I didn't want to wear anything girly, even though I was girly. I was a blonde California girl, and I wanted to wear my pink juicy suit, right. but um, I wouldn't. I would like dress in black or like try and look the part because I wanted people to respect me or you know take me seriously. But now I know that I don't have to do that. Like I, 
I, I made it to the Olympics. I have a resume to prove it. Um, and I'm confident now in my skills. So I'm just, I'm just gonna be who I am. And if that's girly sometimes, then whatever. And I think that that represents a lot of people, out, a lot of women out there also. What did your friends from school say about you doing this? Like, did they think it was weird? Were they supportive? They were supportive, but then, um, you know, you lo you lose friends because I couldn't go. I didn't want to go out on Friday and Saturday nights anymore. I wanted to get up and train and run. So I, I lost a lot of friends, and it was just. And then I up and moved to Michigan and right. just kind of started a whole new life. So, but you know, it was a sacrifice I, I made. Now I remember when Rhonda brought you for the Amanda Nunes fight, right? Mm -hmm. You you were in her camp for that. Yeah. That is one of the most mysterious, bizarre buildups to a fight ever because she didn't speak to anyone. She, she was a mute. It, yeah. She didn't talk to us even on fight week. The UFC gave her carte blanche to do nothing. She shows up and, and literally to me looked like a shell of her former self. Like she got punched once and then that was it, a 60 second fight. What was she like in that camp? Um, she honestly seemed really focused in that camp. Uh, you know, her. I remember her being really lean, leaner mm -hmm. than normal and she seemed happy and focused and I think she just cut out that media because I mean, I don't know. I don't want to speak for her, but she cut out that media just so she can zone it. Because I mean, imagine. I mean, I I don't. I can't imagine how much media would be after her at that right. stage in her career. So. How did you link up with her? Um, I actually met her years and years ago, like right before she blew up. Okay. And we had a sparring session then, and so um, I knew her coach, and I, her coach contacted me through Instagram. Edmund. Yeah. Edmund. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, Michaela, you know, she, we'd love some sparring from you if you're available." So. I was like, yeah, awesome, for sure. And what was it like being a part of our camp? It was it was fun. You know, they were really cool. You know, they set me up. I feel and like you're not took telling us the me. truth here, Michaela. Well, you know, I signed something. I'm not supposed to say oh, anything about the camp. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> yeah. NDA. Yeah. Is that a common thing? I, I think so. Oh, really? I mean, I think when someone's doing that big, when someone's that big, they obviously don't oh. want me talking about the sparring and all Even that. Even after which, the fact. Yeah, I guess so. Like three years later. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so I can't tell you how I can't ask you how she was in sparring. No. What she was like, you're not gonna give me anything. <laughs> no. Are you still? Cl are, you could have just said that at the top. No. You were trying to like skirt around. Yeah, it. well, I'm just giving you, you know. Okay, I appreciate the it. No details. Are, are you? Uh, are you still in touch with her now? Um, no. I mean, we follow each other on Instagram, but that's it. Yeah, no I, I, she had an event out in, uh, at the Wild Card West in yeah. Hollywood, which I went out and saw her to do that. Okay. Um, but that's the last time I saw her. That was like a couple months ago. And you went to the fight. Her sure. fight against Nunez. Yeah. You were there. Was yeah. that your first UFC fight? Yeah. What did you think of it? Um, it From was, like a show perspective, not the fight itself, like the, the whole like production. Yeah, it was, I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Was super fun. And she got me front row seats too, or like a couple seats back, like third. Okay. So it was, it was great. Yeah. Are you surprised she hasn't fought again? Um, no. No. I mean, look, she's got a, she got a, an awesome career right now it's WWE right making probably tons of money right so I mean the fighting's a brutal sport if you have you you do it to make money right we're all in here because we want to we love it but we're here to, to bust our ass get the recognition and make some money and you know you don't want to do it forever if you don't have to would so. you ever do that WWE, WWE stuff yeah I don't know I don't know if I have the, like the type okay. to do that I don't know if I have like that Showmanship, that, yeah, <laughs> or showwomanship, <laughs> yeah, getting on the microphone, sure. talking smack, all that stuff. Yeah, I don't around. know, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, they pay me enough. I'll, I'll figure sure, it out. Of course, you're a prize fighter, right? <laughs> yeah. People get mad about when, when 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 fighters say that, but at the end of the day, the belts are nice and all, but you want to make money. Yeah, and we know we can't fight forever, so that's the goal. The goal is to is to build your name, build your brand here, so that you can have a career after fighting, right? right? And so that's exactly what she's doing. Now, I feel like the biggest fight, or one of the biggest fights that can happen right now in female boxing is you versus Katie Taylor. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me? Yep. How, how far away are we from this being a policy? You're with different promoters, of course. Mm -hmm. Can can this even happen? Do you foresee a time that this happens? Is it something that you want to see happen? Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um, and it just needs to happen at the right time because it would be a shame if the world wasn't watching. Ah, uh, okay. So it's too soon now. It's too soon now okay. because I, I actually, I'm, I'm still able to make 130. She's fighting at 135. So yeah. I'm going, I'm gonna take the belts at 130, um, take that division while I still can. And then sometime next year, uh, I'll move up to 135 and start fighting the girls there. And that that's, I think it'll be great because we'll both be champs, yeah. both have belts and, but there's a lot of other girls too, you know? So we'll see, we'll see. If I'm not trying to disparage them, but I feel like that could be one of the biggest. It is, it's, it, yeah. it is definitely big. She has a huge following in Europe, huge yeah. following in Ireland. Um, Top Rank is helping me build my following here in the United States. So 
I think it's going to be an exciting fight. Did you watch our fight on Saturday? I did. You did? Okay, you made a point to watch it. Yeah. Conor McGregor was there in the front row. Do you see that? Yep. Who's who's in the front row supporting you? You need more love. I know. American fighters need to support you. <laughs> I Jeez. know. Jeez, he's like pumping her up, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Yeah. Need to get behind you. How many how many fights is your top rank deal for? Um, How does that I, work? Well, it's a five fight a year contract, but they're overdoing it. I mean, okay. I'm happy with it. Okay. I mean, it was seven this last year, so. How many years? Uh, three. Three years. So one and a half or one and change is done. Yeah. But Almost. that doesn't mean it's going to be then. That was just what we started with. So. Okay. But you can renegotiate in the uh, middle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got to start paying more. Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. renegotiate. I mean, we, they, they were. We're taking, in their mind, taking a risk right. with me. Okay, can we develop a market for women's boxing? But I know, my manager knows, my team yeah. knows that we will. Yes. And so we know we know what we're going to do. And I think they're starting to believe in me too. So You will be top ranked Ronda Rousey. You will break down all those doors. I've always said I wanted to be the Ronda Rousey of boxing. You there know, you she's go. done so much. And she's her her success has, has crossed over into, into boxing because, like I said, when I sat down top rank, they, they see. They see what you know, Rhonda and other girls, how they can be on big cards and headline fights and how it sells. So so the next one is December 21st? December 14th. 14th. Mm -hmm. And where is it? It's going to be in Corpus Christi, Texas. Oh, nice. Yeah. So very exotic. My Texas fans. And, and uh, <laughs> do we have an opponent yet? Uh, no. And are you going for another belt or are you defending your belt? Um, I believe I'll be defending my belt. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, you know, in the next couple of fights, I want to get that WBC belt. I think the title holder right now, she's from Finland. So um, literally, I have no say in my fights. Coach Al <laughs> is like super, I mean, 75 year old boxing coach from Philly. I mean, he's yeah. done this and he can do this in his sleep. Yeah. He's very particular. So I'm not even allowed to ask who I'm fighting until he comes to me and tells me. He's wow. like, don't worry about it. You focus on this fight, get in the gym. I'll call you when I know when, when I when I know what we're doing. Yeah. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> wow, I love that. Yeah. It's so different from our world. Yeah. It's completely different, but I like that. It's very old school. It's very old school. And he'll guide you and you just follow him. And he tells me, he's like, Lis listen to me. He's like, I've done this. I have have 11 Olympians, Michaela. I have three world champions. He's like, you'll be a world champion if you just listen to me. And I'm like, how can you say that? You yeah. After everything he's done for me. Right. I mean, you, you can't, you've got to believe him. And so far, so good. So far, so good. So far, I've listened. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. Thank you for doing Thanks. this. I really yeah, appreciate no it. Congrats on all your success. You're killing it. Thank You're you. on ESPN. If you can just sign our banner, that would be for tremendous. Sure. We're having people sign our banner and we're going to do something with that at, okay. at some point. The next fight, ESPN or ESPN Plus? We don't know. I don't know. Let's push for ESPN. Let's Everyone go linear. Everyone tag USA Box. Or okay. tag, <laughs> tag Top Rank. Old habits. <laughs> Tell me you they die hard. Me. Um, but keep it up really we're okay. watching we're supporting you so i wish you the best continued success Thanks. and thank you for changing your flight and all that stuff to yeah come no in. problem this was so a lot good. of fun everlast michaela mayor yeah, yes thank you everlast. Thank you, everlast. <laughs> thank you very much yeah so if you don't mind just signing yeah, that on your way sure. out you could just do it yourself it's it's very nonchalant here okay we're still yeah, well oh yeah you're wondering about the marker it's right over there you yeah. see it nope to the left to the left like oh, the yeah, the is that okay. a beyonce song to the left no who is that <laughs> yeah. i don't know who that is um by the way my mom just texted me that she loves you so she's a big uh, she's a big fan of yours, and I don't know if we have any gold uh, markers over there, but close enough. Okay. There it is, Michaela Mayer, 2016 Olympian fighting on ESPN once again on December 14th. That's ESPN Television. All right, you best believe, and uh, could have been a Bellator MMA fighter, but alas, destined for greater things in the world of professional boxing. 8-0 now, soon to be 9-0, just want a belt, many more to come. Thank you so much for stopping by, Michaela. All the best to you, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you so much for coming in studio as well. There she is, Michaela Mayer. What a great pleasure that was. Great to have her in studio.